Well, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone this evening. I um, have a couple of announcements to make before we get started. Uh, certainly appreciate everybody being here. Uh, I did uh, want to let everyone know that uh, we had a positive COVID test for one of our members uh, that was in attendance on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll be visiting further about some uh, additional precautions. Uh, we will also uh, be coming out with some additional uh, requests, but in the meantime, uh, we hired a crew to come in and do a uh, complete disinfection in the auditorium. Uh, that has been completed as of this afternoon. We found out about this today, uh, but we did want you to be aware of that. I uh, want everyone to be be aware of that situation and we'll be uh, communicating some additional information uh, in the next couple of days so that you'll have that before Sunday. So we appreciate everyone being with us tonight. We appreciate everyone that is joining us uh, through Facebook Live and will be uh, watching later on YouTube. And I would invite you to uh, go to God in prayer with me as we begin our service tonight. Holy Father, we are thankful for all the many blessings that you send our way. We thank you, Father, for the gift of Jesus, the life that he lived here on the earth to set an example for us and to teach his disciples and to leave his word behind for the death that he died on the cross of Calvary to redeem us from sin. And Father, we're thankful for all the other perfect spiritual blessings that you have provided to us through Christ. We pray that you would bless us in our service this evening, that you would be with Stephen as he presents to us from your word. We pray that you would grant him wisdom and insight and that he might be able to effectively convey your word to us. And Father, that we might take that word and allow it to be planted in our lives and take root and bear much fruit for the kingdom. We pray, Father, that you be with those that are sick or hurting, those that are struggling with various kinds of difficulty in their life. We pray that you be with those that have tested positive for the virus. Please be with our health care workers and our first responders. And Father, we pray that you would be with our leaders, that they would make decisions that would help us to uh, be able to combat this virus. And Father, we pray that you would grant us all wisdom and kindness and compassion through this process. We acknowledge that we sin, Father, and we ask your forgiveness as we come to you in repentance and as we forgive those who sin against us. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much for Jesus. It's in his most precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Good evening. The first song we'll be singing is uh, A Wonderful Savior. <clears throat> well, let's sing. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. Covers me there with his hand. When clothed in his brightness, transported, I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, how shall with the millions on high? He hide of my soul. The cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He 
hide my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand Will you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the things that you have, have done for us, giving us this opportunity to gather as family uh, in person and both online. Thank you for this technology that you have blessed us with. Lord, I pray that you uh, be with Stephen as he is about to prepare a, a lesson to us. May it touch our hearts and minds so that we know that uh, there's just another reason to be a child of God. And we know that prayer is an avenue and a, a way to come before you with things that are on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, I pray that you be at those right now who are struggling, who are who are suffering, those who are who are lost. Lord, I pray that you touch them and to lead and to lead them back to you. We love you so very much, and we're so thankful for Jesus. And we pray this in His name. Amen. guys hear me okay in the back good all right it's working we're going to continue our summer series this evening 13 reasons to become a Christian tonight we're going to look at your prayers will be heard by God and I'll admit I struggled a bit when Mark told me this was the topic because I thought is that a question is that a statement what is that I mean, prayer for those of us that have been raised in the church, and by the way, I'm a walker, and I was told I can walk way out here and still be on camera, so bear with me. For those of us that were raised in the church, prayer has just kind of always been something that was just integral to our life. We pray before meals, we pray in the morning, we pray in the evening, we pray at church, we just pray. And I think maybe sometimes we take it for granted, right, that it's just there. It's a thing we do. So I struggled. Prayer, in some form or fashion, is referenced over 600 times in the Bible, whether it be by a certain Greek or Aramaic or Hebrew word or by actual recitation of a prayer, 600 times. And believe me, you think the Eskimos have a lot of words for snow and ice? The Hebrews had a lot of words for prayer. So what exactly is prayer? I thought I would start with a quote from George Bernard Shaw. He said, the problem with communication is the illusion that it has been accomplished. COVID has taught me one thing in particular is that communication is crucial. It's one of those things that I took for granted all the time with my team at work, maybe that I took for granted with my family, certainly with Christians at this congregation. It was amazing to me how much I missed that ability to communicate with you guys, to talk even with the people that I work with on a daily basis. Yeah, you can Zoom, you can WebEx, you can Teams, you can do all these things, but there's never really a replacement for that communication. There's something lacking in it. So communication is not only important for us to kind of give out those things to people around us, but it's vital to our human experience. And it's amazing how many things you communicate in a nonverbal way, okay? Have you ever tried to email or text somebody an emotional thing? It's pretty tough, you laugh, but it's tough, right? Why do you think they invented em emojis? It wasn't because somebody thought it'd be cute, it's like, oh, I'm happy. Hey, look, I'll just do a little colon and a, you know, um, Parentheses, there you go. Okay, it, it, communication is vital. And it certainly has always been a part of God's people. What happened in, in the Garden of Eden? Adam and Eve had the luxury of communicating directly with God. God walked with them. Now, is that a prayer? Okay, some may argue one way or the other, but it doesn't matter. They communicated directly with God. And it was only once sin came into the world that that mode of communication changed. 
No longer were we able to communicate face to face with God because we are now separated from Him by the gulf of sin. And it wasn't until Adam's son, Seth, had his own son that we get the first real recorded reference to what could be loosely considered a prayer. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 26, it says, People began to call upon the name of the Lord. What does that mean? They didn't just say, Lord, Lord. It was an affirmation of the power of the Lord, and it was a call to Him for help and blessing. Blessing of Seth's son. Later, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 8, we see something similar. Abram, once he actually gets his wife slash sister back, you know, I won't go into that whole story, but once things are restored to him, he does what? He builds an altar to the Lord and calls upon the name of the Lord. Why did Abram call on the name of the Lord? He called on the name of the Lord to acknowledge who he was and the power that he had in the fact that his wife had been restored to him. It was a recognition of his power. You know, for some reason today, prayers just seems to be cheapened. We treat God like we might a slot machine. You know what, I got a quarter. I'm just going to put it in here and pull the lever and hope for the best. Right? Triple sevens, daddy, daddy gets new shoes. For some reason, we just seem to have made this no big deal. And you'll find all kinds of people trying to pray to God, right? So part of what we're going to look at tonight is what does it mean to have God hearing your prayer? Okay? Hearing is not about simply perceiving sound. In this context, it means God is listening. He's hearing. He's taking in your words. He's considering them. Some people just pray, and they'll admit, I I don't know if there's a God up there or not, but hey, maybe there is, so I'm going to pray. There's no question that God has the power to hear everything. Okay? And that's a much bigger lesson we're not going to cover tonight. But if you look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3, David declares this, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on who? The evil and the good. In Psalm chapter 139, verse 4, it says, Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. David is declaring that there's nothing under the sun that God is incapable of hearing. So it's not a matter of saying God can't hear certain things. It's a matter of understanding that context. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So yes, God hears prayers but he hears prayers of the righteous. James tells us in James chapter 5, verse 16, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person person has great power as it is working. So what is it about prayer? There's four things that I'd like to cover with you tonight briefly. Hopefully you can take away a little bit from this. The first one is for God to hear your prayer, you must be a righteous believer. Number two, and this one is fantastic. Jesus is your advocate and the Holy Spirit is your intercessor. You get that? That's amazing. Number three, for God to hear your prayer, you must have faith. Believe it or not, if you don't ask in faith, you might as well not ask. Number four, God answers all prayers of the faithful in his own time. So point number one. For God to hear your prayer, you must be a righteous believer, a faithful follower. As we established earlier, God is capable of hearing all things, even those that are unspoken. In Proverbs 28, verse 9, it says, One turns away, or excuse me, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. You know what abomination means? 
It means something that's to be discussed, something that's unnatural. Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12, says, Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Get this. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. God elects not to hear the prayers of the unfaithful, the unrighteous. Don't ever think that God can't hear them. He elects not to because of the gulf of sin. Okay? So all men can pray, but not all men will be heard. And again, abomination. There's certain times in the Bible where certain words are used, and if you really dig into them deep, it's, I mean, it should just get you in the gut. If you're praying a prayer and you're not righteous, you're not right with God, God sees that prayer as something unnatural, as an abomination, something that is disgusting to him. I'll tell you what, I don't ever want to be on that end. I don't ever want to be there. As Christians, we are gifted with that direct line of communication to God. There's no other creature that can boast that. God has promised us that he will hear us and that that line of communication is always open. In John chapter 15, verses 7 through 8, it says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So did you get that? Who's saying that? It's Jesus saying that. Jesus is saying that. As Christians, we can pray with confidence knowing that God will hear. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of Him. Did you see how he used those words? He didn't say, well, you know, I think, or maybe, or kind of. He said, what? Confidence. I know. There is an assurance that comes with being a Christian. You have the assurance that your prayers will be heard by God. Again, that's an amazing thing. The Creator has assured you. So I don't know if any of you guys remember the old Batman series from the late 60s, early 70s, Adam West, Batman. Commissioner Gordon had that bat phone. Anybody remember that? It was that red phone, I think it was. It sat there. It didn't have a dial, you know, no way to dial. It sat under a glass thing. He'd pick it up and he'd pick up the phone. Now, I always thought Commissioner Gordon was pretty stupid because if I were him, I never would have put the phone down. I'm like, why would I ever not want Batman here, right? But he never got a busy signal. I also always wondered why the Joker didn't go in and just cut the line so he didn't go, it's neither here nor there. The point is, you have something similar. You can pick up that avenue of prayer anytime. You'll never get a busy signal, and you never have to put it down. It's an amazing thing to be a Christian and know that when we are faithful Christians, if we are walking in the light as He has told us to do, He will always answer our prayers. So be sure God hears the prayers of the faithful, those made righteous through the blood of his son. Number two. Sorry. Number two. Jesus is your advocate and the Holy Spirit is, in your is your intercessor. So I don't know why. This one just kind of struck me as humorous when I started thinking about it. it. Made me think of some courtroom in southern Louisiana. You walk into the courthouse in front of the judge, and the guy that's with you, that's your lawyer, is his son. And the one that prepped you for the trial is a guy that sits on the bench with him. It may sound funny, but Jesus and the Holy Spirit both intercede for us to the Father. It's one of those things, again, that just kind of strikes you. You're just amazed that... There's power in that. So as Christians, we can have the confidence that Jesus will be our, the advocate on our behalf. And again, this is the 
being we put to death. The reason he was on that cross was because of us. Now, there may have been others that nailed that nail and put the sword in his side or the spear in his side. But be assured it was us that hung him on that cross. First John chapter 2, verse 1, it says, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So not only did he suffer those indignities, not only did he go to the cross before we knew him, but he still to this day advocates for us in front of the Father. So when you pray, there's an advocate there. In a manner, in a manner of speaking, we get to name drop. We get to name drop. When we go to, prayer, we go to God in prayer and we ask in the name of Jesus, we are told it will be granted. In John chapter 15, verse 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So not only has God left this provision for us, not only has he allowed us to communicate with him, but he's also established his son as the intermediary, the person that helps transport those prayers to God. Okay, so if you're like me, I don't know, maybe it's just been a bad day. Maybe you're too angry, you're too hurt. Maybe you're just too happy. I don't know. But maybe sometimes you have a hard time praying. There's been a few times in my life where I find it very difficult to go to God in prayer because I don't feel like I'm up to it. I just can't come up with those words. But you know what? There's a cure for that, too. We're told that the Holy Spirit will help us. In John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So Jesus is our advocate, but so too is the Holy Spirit, but in a slightly different way. The Holy Spirit resides with us today, with all saved Christians. And that Holy Spirit does two things. It leads you to the truth, and it helps you when you pray to God. Look at Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 27. This is really one of the most beautiful passages in the Bible. It's very short. But it really, I think, epitomizes the human nature the frailties, the weaknesses. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he also searches hearts, excuse me, and he who searches hearts knows what is the, the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. God willed it. God set this up. God willed that you be helped by the Holy Spirit. That's got to comfort every Christian. That's got to comfort every Christian. You know, we're prone to ramble. We don't know how to ask a question. We don't know how to ask for help. If you're a man, you don't know how to ask for directions. But the Holy Spirit's there to help you. All you have to do is listen for it. Now, don't think I'm going crazy. If you start hearing voices talking in your head, come talk to me. You've got to listen to it. It's there. When you pray, we'll get to this in a minute, you have to have faith, but you've got to know that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to ask for the things that you need to ask for. God hears the prayers of those who pray in the name of Jesus and who are guided by the Spirit. Point number three, for God to hear your prayer, you must have faith. So what is a prayer without faith? It's just words. It's just a song. It's just a poem. Who knows what it is, but it's not a prayer. Do you go to somebody that's close to you and ask them for something 
not believing they can give it to you? Would you ever do that? Would you go to your mother, your father, your wife, your children and say, I need you to do this and you don't expect them to do it? Well, of course not. Faith is that way in prayer. We have to go to prayer understanding that faith is an integral part of it. <clears throat> it's kind of like asking something or saying something and keeping your fingers crossed behind your back, just in case. Again, it goes back to that slot machine. I'm going to throw it out there. Don't know whether it's real or not, but maybe I'll get it. In Matthew chapter 21, we have the count of the fig tree. It starts in verse 18. It's a little bit longer of a reading, but I thought it was worthwhile to hear the whole story so you get the context. In the morning, <clears throat> as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's start over. In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, <clears throat> May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the... Or, <clears throat> you will own, Excuse me. You will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. According to Jesus, if you pray for something and don't doubt, and you have that faith, it'll be granted to you. That's a pretty powerful thought. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not your own doing, it is the gift of God. So this faith comes as a gift from God. When you're praying, you just have to utilize the gift that you have. When you became a Christian, that faith was gifted to you. Understanding who God is, understanding who Jesus is, should naturally lead you to that faith. The Hebrew writer in chapter 11, often called the Hall of Fame of Faith, writes, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For, it, for by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. So what is it? Faith is what? The assurance. Faith is the conviction. So when you go to God in faith without doubts, you're saying, I believe. I believe. So what are we talking about when we say, what, 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 what is faith? What, faith in what? Faith is that God can and will. Faith that He's going to hear. Faith that He will answer. Faith that He has power. Faith that He knows best. You have to acknowledge that and recognize that. As you can see, faith should be an integral part of our prayer. I don't know about you, but there's quite a bit of doubt in my life these days. It's hard to be live in COVID and not have doubts. So is that what this means? Did Jesus mean don't have doubts? No. Did Jesus mean... All of a sudden, you're going to understand everything and you're going to know when it's going to happen. Exactly. No. Again, it goes back to faith and, la and that lack of doubt go hand in hand. Your faith should lead you to not doubt the power of God. The next point's kind of interesting. We'll get into that in a minute. But this one is another strong, strong statement of faith. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Sounds pretty strong to me. Paul said, I know. And I know God's going to keep what I commit to him safe and sound until that day. Know this, God hears the prayers of faithful people. Point number four, God answers all prayers of the faithful in his own time. Wow. 
That's a, that's a struggle. Especially today, we live in a fast food world. We want everything now. I want to tell my house to do something and do it. I want Google to tell me what stocks to invest in, Siri to pull up a song. I want everything. When I was in high school here in Corpus, if somebody said go to Cal Allen, I was like, oh, that's 15 minutes. That's, that's too far. It takes too long. Then I moved to Houston. Ha <laughs> ha. Totally different world. Perspective of time. You know, I heard a funny story about this little girl named Sarah. She was lying on a hill. It's kind of a cloudy day, spring. These fluffy white clouds are floating by. And she said, hmm, you know, I just wonder if God's out there. She said, God, are you really there? To her astonishment, a voice came from the clouds. Yes, Sarah, what can I do for you? Taking advantage of the opportunity, Sarah asked, God, what is a million years like to you? So knowing that Sarah could not understand the concept of infinity, God responded in a manner to which she could re relate. A million years to me, Sarah, is like a minute. Oh, said Sarah. Well, then what's a million dollars like to you? A million dollars to me, Sarah, is like a penny. So Sarah thought about that, and she said, hmm, wow, that's pretty cool. You're so generous, God. Can I have one of your pennies? God replied, sure thing, Sarah, just a minute. <laughs> we have to understand that God works in a completely different frame of reference in time. We have to move away from that fast food mentality and understand that a prayer answered doesn't come with a subscript saying when. Okay, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it tells us, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any soul should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Understanding that prayer takes patience is crucial. It's critical. When you go in in faith and, and that elimination of doubt, you must also go in with patience. You have the assurance of His answer, but you must be willing to wait. In the Old Testament, Micah recognized that. In Micah chapter 7, verse 7, he says, But as for me, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. What was Micah doing? Micah was moaning to God about the sinfulness of the world he lived in. He proclaims in the very first part of that chapter that there are no godly men left. It's a bad time for Micah. But what does Micah do? Say, I know my Lord will avenge. I know he will prevail. And I'm going to wait. In Psalm, excuse me, Psalm 27, 14, is another great, great passage. It says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Again, in 2 Peter chapter 3 but move back for one to verse 8 but do not overlook this one fact beloved that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day don't treat God like Siri don't demand an answer from him he will answer you you just have to have the patience you have to look for those answers God will answer your prayers in his own time So, brief summary. Four things that I want you to take away from this. For God to hear your prayer, you must be a righteous believer. You must be one of the saved. That was true in the Old Testament and is true in the New. There's numerous passages, and I just covered just a handful. God's ears and eyes are turned away from the sinful man. You must, must be a righteous believer. Number two, don't ever forget that Jesus is pleading for you. Jesus is your advocate. And the words you need when things are slow and hard come from the Holy Spirit himself. He will help you. No matter how bad it is, how inept you feel, or how low you feel, the Holy Spirit will help you. Number three, for God to hear your prayer, you must have faith. Don't pray without faith. Sounds silly. 
but don't pray without faith. You have to have faith that God is. God will. Number four, God answers all prayers of the faithful in his own time. We know we're but a vapor. We know that our lives are very short. Remember Sarah and her conversation. God will answer our prayers. He'll just do it in his own time. We can have confidence that God will hear our prayers. God can even read our thoughts and intents. Just look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. So it's not a matter of whether he will hear us or not. It's a matter of whether we'll accept his answer. This much is true. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29. Prayer is an integral part of our lives. But we must understand that God hears those prayers. And when you do, the comfort you feel from that, being able to lay all your burdens on Him, to thank Him for all that He's granted, to cry to Him, to laugh to Him, to do all the things that He's asked us to do, should be an extreme comfort. I don't know about you, but I've prayed a lot harder and a lot more lately for a lot of things. We discussed some months ago when we had a Sunday morning class. There shouldn't be a set time for your prayer. Your prayer should happen always. You should pray without ceasing. But when you do, remember the God Almighty, the creator of all mankind is there to hear you, that his son will deliver those prayers to him and advocate for you and that the Holy Spirit will guide you in what you need to say. I hope this lesson helped you a little bit. I know it helped me in preparing it. We take prayer for granted, like I said, 600 times. I didn't know that. 600 times in the Bible. I learned a lot more about Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew than I thought I ever would either. I hope it helped. Don't ever forsake the avenue of prayer. You are a unique being. You are a Christian. You are a saved man and woman whose God wants you to talk to him. Communication is vital. Communication to our God. What else is there? You can't. You can't deny it. So again, I hope this lesson has helped you. Maybe there's some here this evening who are not yet members of the body of Christ. Maybe you'd like to study a little bit more about prayer or about the steps to becoming a Christian. Know that there are many amongst this congregation that would be willing and love to have that conversation with you. Maybe you're a Christian and you're having a little bit of difficulty these days. and You just like the prayers of this body. Whatever your need is, if you have one, please come forward this evening as we sing this invitation. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you are evil a victory win? There's one power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily as praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the
Thank you everyone for being here again tonight, especially all of our visitors here in person and online. The prayers that have been added to the prayer list this week include requests for Lynn and Betty Hervey, both requesting prayers for their health. And also one of the preaching students, Jeff Bunner, has requested prayers for his father-in-law, Mike. There are a few upcoming events, uh, both of which happen to be on June 28th. Pamela Huerta is having a bridal shower on uh, next Sunday, and we ask that you please RSVP to the office by we next Wednesday, right, a week from today. Uh, and we're also planning to have the reception for the 2020 high school graduates on that Sunday as well at 6 p.m. And we need everyone who will be planning to attend to RSVP to the office by this Sunday. Uh, that way we can plan accordingly to make sure that we have all social distancing. So for both, it is very important that you RSVP to the office. There will be a Sunday Bible class at 845 on Zoom, or we still have the 9 o'clock uh, class in the auditorium, and also 10 a.m. for worship. If you'll please bow with me as we close in prayer. Almighty Father, we love you so very much. We thank you, Lord, for this avenue of prayer. Only someone so perfect as you could come up with a way that you could hear the cries of all your children at any time. Lord, as we come to you in prayer, not just now, but at every time, we come to you because we recognize you as authority, that we need you, that we need a better relationship with you. And Lord, as we do pray each and every time, please help to prick our hearts, that they be open to you. And if anything stands in the way of us being righteous, being faithful, help us to overcome it. And as we pray, Lord, help us to listen, not just for the answer that we want, but for what answer it is that you say we need in order to grow. All these things, Lord, we pray through your Son, Jesus. Amen.